Hey everyone, it's July 15th, 2001, just after 8 a.m. in the morning. We're over here at Tempe Town Lake for episode 10 of my Community Lakes and Ponds ep series. Um, we're going to do a morning fish here for a few hours, and then my, my thought is to come back this evening, if weather permitting, and do another few more hours this evening and see how the day fishing and the night fishing is. So stay tuned, I'm going to get some poles set up and get them in the water. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to this pink Blue Fox number 2 spinner. Try it up here along the wall. I'm trying to cast it about a foot, foot and a half off of the wall, let it drop about six inches to a foot down, and just run it right along this little wall where most of these minnows and stuff are traveling. I'm going to move down just a little bit more, take the net with me. I brought my big net today in case we get a big fish, like a big cat or something. Oh, something just hit it. I got a little bite right there. It might be like a bluegill or a small yellow bass, and this hook might just be too big. But something just took a swipe at it. Oh, it might have got. I think we got a fish. Feels like a small one. So we got something. A little yellow bass. A little yellow bass, guys. I felt like I got hit by something before. He kind of engulfed that. Let me get my pliers. But hey, that's a good start. Nice little yellow bass here. Kind of had a feeling that was a, like a little yellow bass that hit me. I say little, but for this lake, that's actually not a bad size yellow bass from what I've caught here. Let's see if we can get this hook out. It's got to be careful. Their back fins are very sharp. He got himself hooked pretty good there. I think we got it here. Just trying to be extra specially careful. Get a good release on them. Now oh, we got it. There you go, guys. Nice little yellow bass. Oh! And he's gone. I was just trying not to get poked. Good start to the day, though. It's now around 12 o'clock. I moved down to the spot that's just east of Rural Road here by the bridge. I'm going to give this a shot. We were down a couple here down there, the second one down. We tried there this morning. All we got was a couple bites on the catfish pole and one yellow bass. So I thought I would try over here where I could cast out a little bit more towards the under the bridge. I see movement already out in front of me and over there. I'm going to start with this rooster tail spinner since that's what I had on last. 
I have caught a few bass on spinners before, but typically it's when I'm targeting trout and I just happen to run into a bass. So I'm going to try a few of these through here. Maybe there's some yellow bass as well. They seem to like the spinners earlier this morning. And then I might switch up to a swim bait or something to try to get through here. I just threw one of those little small frozen fish I had in the water there. And you can see all those little minnows going crazy. Oh, and now there was like a carp or something. I just saw a big fish come up towards it and then swim away. There's like a big carp there circling around all those fish. I can see them. They're just devouring that like crazy. And there's a big fish swimming right through all that stuff. It's just after 12.30. I was going to take a little break from casting. Had a couple of bites under the bridge here, but nothing since threw some bait in the water here that was just left over. I've taken it off the hook and the minnows and stuff have been going crazy and it seems to be attracting the carp. So I threw out a couple of poles here. This one just has one of those uh, thawed out little fish on it and this one's got a chickpea on it. So we'll see. There were some pretty big carp that came through here. So we'll sit here and play the waiting game for a little bit. We just got a big bite on that garbanzo bean, and he's taken a lot of line. Feels like we got a pretty big, we got a pretty big carp on here. I think if I can get the pole out, I loosen my drag quite a bit. Oh no, it just went loose. I think I just lost him. Oh dang, my drag was so loose, I just lost him. Oh, that felt like a big one. He took off towards the middle here. There was one little garbanzo bean on that thing. Chickpea. And... It didn't set. He was gone. Whoa, that was crazy. Let's try that again. Well, since we had that big hit on that chickpea, I went ahead and set both poles up here with the chickpea and I still left the drags loose so that they're, they're so close to the edge here and carp hit so hard. I just got a bad luck on that last one. This one just got a hit right here. A quick little hit so I'm going to keep an eye on it. But we'll see what happens here. I'm keeping the drag loose. Hopefully we don't lose another fish. It's just the line's only about 10 feet out so if they hit and run I just got to be ready to grab and set a little faster. I was trying to get the camera on and recording before I grabbed the pole. So, but like I said, this one just got a small little tug, so I'll have to see because those chickpeas don't stay on very well. So I'll stay here and keep an eye on these. Maybe we can land ourselves a big carp. I think we got this guy on. He just hit. I had to run and get the camera. I was in the middle of doing something. I got to tighten this up a little bit. I feel like he's still on there. But he hit and ran like a monster like the last guy. Now this is my 10 pound braid, so let's hope he's not a, a huge, huge guy. Oh, he's decent size. We're gonna have to try to see if we can get him down over here to land him. Yeah, those chickpeas work pretty good. That's the second one. Let's hope we don't lose this guy. He's going right towards my other line. Whoop! Don't fall. He's a decent sized carp. Oh shit! It just freaking fell off. I don't know if you guys saw him. Ah, oh, damn. Oh, so close. He was a nice size carp. I hope he showed up on the camera. Well, let's put another one on there and try again. 
I just hooked into another one. I think it's another carp or something. I'm pretty sure it's a carp. He almost took my pole. Thank God for the bungee cord. I did lose my bell into the water because my pole was hanging over the water. Let's see if third time's the charm and we can actually land one of these things. Let me get the net. Man, he almost took my pole. This is why I tell you guys, always have a bungee cord. That's another decent carp. I don't think he's as big as the last one that I lost, but another decent one. They're, they're strong enough at any size to, to pretty much almost take your pole. Oh, almost had him. Let's bring him in. Oh, oh, lost him. Let's get him. Let's get him in the net. He does not want to be in the net. We got him. All right, guys. We landed a carp, finally. I think we'll call this a day on the carp because i got to come back tonight. That guy was actually hooked pretty good. That's a nice size one, too. Beautiful carp. Let's see if we can get him get that hook out and get him out yeah he got hooked nice in the top with one of those little garbanzo beans let's hope my other pole doesn't go nuts while I'm in here doing this I couldn't imagine two of these poles going off at the same time all right so take a gander at that guy beautiful He's not that heavy, so I'm not going to get a weight on him. I want to get him back out. It's pretty hot. He doesn't feel that heavy, just a few pounds. Not like the last one. I think he was probably at least a 10-pounder. Uh, he's kind of croaking a little bit there. There you go, guys. A nice Tempe Town Lake carp. Beautiful golden carp here. Let's get them back out there. They're good fighters. You guys saw that? That's the couple that hit me before that I lost. That guy almost took my whole pole into the lake. If I did not have it bungee corded down, it would be gone right now. So, we'll go ahead and end the episode on that. Well, at least the first half of the episode, the daytime at Tempe Town Lake. It's almost 1 p.m. Go home, get some rest, and if the weather permitting, I'm going to come back tonight and do some night fishing. Maybe we'll try some more garbanzo beans, those chickpeas, and see if we can get anything else. So stay tuned. Second part's coming right up. We're back here for the second part at Tempe Town Lake for episode 10. We're going to do some night fishing. It's around 9 p.m. Stay here until around midnight. We'll give it three hours. I basically bought the stuff to be catfishing and going for bass. I left the carp stuff at home since we got one earlier. I'm going to start with a circle hook here. And I had some frozen dead bluegills from my park by my house. Um, I'm also going to be using my smaller pole here with a little worm to try to catch some live bluegill. If I can get lucky to catch a live bluegill, then I bought my heavy duty catfish rod here that I can put out with a, a live bluegill. So I'm going to get set up and put this catfish rod into the, into the lake here and then try to catch some bluegills. The park hours here are till midnight. I believe it's 5, 5.30 in the morning until uh, midnight. Uh, I have fished here plenty of times after midnight. I think I've fished here till 2, 3 in the morning with my son before on a really late night. And I've never had anyone ever say anything but just so you guys know that is the the posted rules is midnight so looks like my swim shad here is coming off the back of this a little bit kind of felt like I had a little bit of a bite on that last cast but maybe I just banged into something I'm hoping that something like this chatterbait going through the water here at night making lots of noise and movement might actually get some action the bobber is getting some action so I'm 
going to go check that as soon as we reel this in and see if we got something. I keep banging into something there. There must be a like a weed patch or something I'm going through. So I keep hitting the same area. Alright, let's check on this uh check on this bobber. It's been getting whacked on a little bit over here. See if we can't get a a nice bluegill for this big catfish pole. Give me a chance at maybe a flathead or something. Oh, I think we got something. We got something on here. What do we got? What do we got? Oh, we got a little catfish. Look at that. A little channel catfish. Not what we were looking for, but hey, we started off again with a small little fish. That actually almost looks like a bull, like a bullhead, but it's not. It's just a small channel. Let me see. Let me look at the tail. Actually, that is not a channel catfish. That's not a channel, I don't believe. Look at the tail. The tail is flat. Channel catfish have a like a V-shaped one. So this actually looks like almost like a little bullhead or maybe a blue. So I don't, I don't know if that's a baby flathead, maybe. But it's definitely not a channel catfish because of the tail. So that's an interesting little catch. Maybe that was a small little flathead. I don't know. Maybe you guys could tell me down below if you know what it is. I'll look it up. But channel catfish have a forked tail. So hey, we switched up from the chatterbait over here to the. Uh, Whopper flopper. I'm gonna give this a shot here. Try to do some. Oh, hold on. Bobber's going nuts. I guess we gotta go check that first. Let's see. What we got. Let's try to get ourselves our, our first bluegill of the night. We already got a little catfish. Um, we got something on there. Really small. Let's see. What we got really really small. What do we got? We got a very small little yellow bass. I'm half tempted to use this for live bait, but I really want to find a bluegill. So let's get this yellow bass back out there. Boy, that's a baby compared to the one we got this morning. But I was telling you, I think in the beginning, when I fish these small little hooks here, watch these little sharpness there, um, I'll get bluegills, yellow bass, little baby catfish, little baby largemouth bass but there you go two fish a little little yellow bass if that's all we end up getting again is, is just little yellow bass i may end up trying a yellow bass uh, as live bait still have the worm put it right back out there I'm trying to just cast it about three to four feet off of the side here and let it drift over towards the edge Alright, now maybe we can try the whopper plopper. So it's a good start, two fish. Maybe I just need to be fishing with worms here. I've never caught anything with a whopper plopper, but it's, it's new to my tackle box. I just picked it up maybe a couple of weeks ago um, when I was going to take it up north and use it for uh, trying to get pike. So, and the bobber is going again, so let's see what we got on the bobber. Come on, bluegill. Something's whacking away. Let's see. Can we get our bluegill? Oh, it went down hard that time. Something's decent on there. Let's see what we got. What did we get this time, guys? Oh, oh, we got a bluegill. We got a bluegill. A nice one, too. That's a big bluegill. Wow, look at the size of that guy. And he gut hooked it, so we're definitely going to keep him. He might be a little big, but what the hell? The only problem with the gut hook is I was hoping to be able to use him as live bait swimming around, but I might have to use him as cut bait. But that's a decent sized little bluegill there. I was trying to get something about half that size, but 
Dang, he's bleeding pretty bad. He got gut hooked good, so uh, let me put him on a little stringer for now. See if he'll stay alive, and then maybe I'll use him for cut bait. The more I look at this guy, I don't think it's a bluegill. I think it's a, a tilapia or a crappie by the back scales here, by these back dorsal fins. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece off. Um, since he gut hooked and I don't want him to bleed out here in the water and I'm going to switch up my frozen one with a nice fresh piece of this until I can get myself a bluegill on the bobber over here so it seemed like the bobber wasn't getting much action so I was double checking it and most of the worm was gone so we put a fresh piece out there on it hopefully that will keep the action flying on that bobber I'm going to switch to a jointed Rapala here try this out here and see like I said see if we can get ourselves like a night bass or something at least it seems like there's something on there we're getting all bobber action tonight let's see um, there is a very small fish on there what do we have oh look at this we got ourselves probably maybe a decent sized live one to use. There we go. That's what we were after. Let's get the other the other pole set up and see if we can put this guy on as some live bait. Okay. We did get I think it's a small tilapia on here. So let's give him a shot on the big pole here and see. We'll see. Can't get them out there too far, but I feel like if they're going to be over here looking, we'll put the clicker on. That way we can hear if we get a bite with the clicker. Time for the 11.30 update. <clears throat> I switched out the uh, my heavier duty catfish pole here with a, uh, when I reeled it up, the uh, tilapia was dead. So I went ahead and kind of gutted him a little bit and took the rest of the tilapia that I had and cut it up. So I've got that one on there, cut open, and I also have another piece of cut meat on this one. So, and threw it way out there. So this one's ready to go. And this one still has the cut piece on here, which got one little hit before, so. I'm thinking about now that I have that cut piece out on that pole that I may go ahead and just throw some bacon on this pole and see what happens. That way I've got kind of a mixture here of two different kinds of baits going. The cut bait pole just got some hits. I think something might be on this cut bait pole. I was sitting here watching the other one for the bacon and this one just started to get some action. So let's see what we got here. This has some big bait on it, so let's see what's going on here. Still going. Oh, it just, I think it just fell off. He just fell off. Dang it. It fought for a quick second and then it, it was gone. Yeah. There was a lot of aid on there and that's all that's left. He had that bait in him. I guess I should have let him keep going with it for a while. I don't have any more cut bait besides this head. Maybe I'll just add some some bacon to it and get this back out there. See what else I have. I probably should have been more patient. It's just after midnight. 
my bacon was gone again on this pole that kept getting little hits. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong with the way I'm hooking up my bacon, but I did this one completely different, so who knows? But we're back on bacon on this pole that got hit a few times. I've lost bacon twice. Usually bacon stays on the hook so good, I don't know what's going on lately. So I've tried a different style of putting it on the hook. We'll see if it works better. And then on this one over here, I had a bite and I was reeling it in and uh, I lost them. And all the bait was gone except for one little piece. So um, they definitely had it. Maybe I might need to be more patient next time. This has an open spool so that they can actually take it and I'll get a clicker. So I went ahead and um, there was still a little bit of the head of that. Um, oh, look, oh, 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 look at that right when I'm standing here. Did you hear that? Somebody's trying to take it right now. The line's still going. I'm going to be more patient. Oh, oh. Let's see. I want to be more patient. It's still bouncing around a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. And I was going to say I put a cut frozen bluegill I had on here that had thawed out. Is he still on there? Oh man. There's nothing right now. Nothing. What the heck is going on? That was a nice hit. I have a bad feeling the bait is gone. And there's no weight on here at all. Ah, they just took the bluegills right off of that hook. That is interesting. The head of the tilapia slid all the way up the line. And look at it. It's totally gone. Something devoured it. So I'm going to slide it back down here to the hook. And I have... One more bluegill, one more little small frozen bluegill left, so let me go grab him and put him on there. I always find that the good catfishing doesn't pick up until around midnight or so. As I was going to get the last bluegill, this one got another hit, so didn't even get a chance to put the bacon away before that other pole got hammered, so we'll keep an ear out for this one. I've got one bluegill left in here from that I had saved from my local park that I caught. They're like these small little small little bluegills. They're thawed out now. But <clears throat> what I normally do with these is I just take them and kind of gut them a little bit. To get the scent out there. I can hear my other pole getting hit while I'm over here. So I just kind of gut him a little bit. This guy is getting banged around a little bit. The bell's still ringing like moving. Definitely a lot of action going on right now. So what I'm going to do is I had this other one on just hooked through the top here like this just like this on there so well my bacon was gone again so I'm trying a new strategy I took off my big ass circle hook and switched it to a number two I'm gonna see if that makes any difference at all going with a little bit smaller hook so we'll see if maybe we can actually land something with a smaller hook than the big hook here we go again 
just put some fresh bacon on there and it just got a few more tugs. I am just having no luck hooking into catfish tonight. Getting tons and tons and tons of bites, but I can't seem to hook into one. I'm going to wait until the thing's going freaking crazy because I have probably pulled the, the, oh there, see it's getting tugged again. I just feel like, you know, that last one I pulled the meat out of his mouth. Over here on the big pole, same thing twice when they took cut bait, they were running with it. And when I tried to set the hook, I just ripped it out. So I think I'm just going to wait and let them just take it. They look, it keeps getting little tugs. That's not even a, enough to ring the bell. It's now 117. After those hits just a minute ago, bacon gone again. So put more bacon on there. We're not fishing tonight. We're feeding the fish. So I'm having no luck catching any fish. So probably going to give it about 15 more minutes till 1:30. Maybe we'll just get lucky and catch something on one of these catfish poles here before the end of the night. So stay tuned. Just turned off the camera and now it's getting hits again. I should check it or not. Look at it. it. Looks like he's swimming away with it. Can we actually land a fish here? Look. Still bouncing around a little bit. I don't know. Lately I've had no luck. He is in a totally different place than where I put the line, so let's see if there's anything fighting me on this. Well, there's something hooked on there now. Hey, we got something finally. Let's see if we can actually land him. Ah, well, maybe the patience paid off. Doesn't feel like a very big fish. Yeah, looks like a small little guy. Which is probably, like I said, what's been taking my bait all night. Are these small little probably small little catfish. That's why I switched up to a little smaller hook. Yeah, it's a small little channel catfish. I don't even need the net for this guy actually. But we'll just grab it anyway. Yeah, these are probably the guys that have been stealing my bait all night long. These small little, this is a small little channel. So at least we ended the night with a catfish. I was hoping to get a decent sized catfish, but this guy is a small one. Come here. Where are we hooked at here? Get it off the net there. I hooked the net. Well, we can get him off the hook. There we go. So yeah, look at this little guy. This is a small little baby channel right here. This is what's been, these guys have been hitting my lines all night and I haven't been able to catch them with my big circle hooks. Obviously these weren't the guys hitting my cut bait that were running, but there's a lot of little channels taking all my bait, so. It's almost 1.30 now, so let's wrap this up on my two-part segment of Tempe Town Lake. Still one of my favorite places to fish in town here. Such a variety of fish. You saw what we caught today. We started the day with a uh, yellow bass, and then we got a uh, carp, and then we came here tonight with a small worm and hook. We were able to get 
a uh, tilapia, a couple tilapias, a uh, flathead, a baby flathead catfish, and then we also got um, another small little yellow bass. So lots of action, lots of fish here. You can use all kinds of bait. Definitely going to come back and do this again sometime. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.